You ever got that one movie where you just don't like it, but you can't fathom why everyone else does because everybody else seems to? Well, I've got ten of those, and I'm sure you guys have yours too. But this is my list. As a disclaimer, this is all my opinion here. If you like these films, go right ahead. You do you. It's America, providing you live in America. We can all do what we want and believe what we want. This is just my silly opinion. And the first one, I will say, is not nearly as bad, but the last two on this list I hate with a passion. Right up there with Arabian Night and Drawn Together the movie as some of my least favorite films of all time. Oh, we know that's gonna be fun now, won't it? Because we know how much I hate those two. So now, the top 10 films that everybody likes that I hate. Number 10, Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. Disclaimer, I like this film, I really do but I hate its reputation. You see, this is a good film. Not great, good. However, it's hailed as some kind of classic while the actual true adaptation of Charlie and the Chocolate Factory is hailed as an abomination. We all know that I vastly prefer Charlie and the Chocolate Factory because I grew up with the Roald Dahl classic. That is basically a book to screen adaptation with very, very few changes. However, this one is not. Despite the fact Roald Dahl is credited, it is a known fact, even as stated in the commentary on the DVD, that Roald Dahl was actually kicked off of the project and his name was still attached as the writer. His script was entirely changed to the point where it had almost no resemblance to his story. The characters are weak, the morals have changed, the lore has changed, the songs have changed, Everything has been completely altered, except for like some plot beats and maybe a few lines. I'm not gonna harp on the special effects, because for what it's worth at the time, it was good. But to have this be hailed as the great cinematic classic that brings Roald Dahl's words to life? No. Especially because this thing gets a lot of credit for what Charlie and the Chocolate Factory does, like having more beloved and fleshed out characters. Alright, maybe I'll give you beloved, but fleshed out, certainly not. Some of these people only have one character trait. Having stronger morals? Nah, I don't really think so. But hey, I could have this debate all the time, and there's a whole hour and a half video of me explaining our side to this. Our side because both me and Kyle think this way. But you know what? I still like it in the end. It's just the reputation that I can't seem to stand. Number 9, The Jerk. Steve Martin's big hit and big classic. It's not all great. When I was getting ready to watch it this Christmas, I was ready for a rip-roaring good time. Eh, it wasn't that. This film is regarded as a classic because it's just complete off-the-wall lunacy comedy. It is anything but. It is slow, jokes are few and far between, and those that are there are just kind of repetitive. The title doesn't even really make much of a sense either, because he's not really a jerk up until the last, like, 15 minutes. It's kind of like Forrest Gump, but like a comedy, but a comedy that's about as slow as Forrest Gump was. In the mind, at least. There's a couple good one-liners and all, but I just don't really get why this is considered to be a classic. When there's a bunch of other comedies that came out around the time that actually did a lot better of jobs. This one is just kind of eh, and I don't really get why everyone says it's a classic. Number 8, Napoleon Dynamite. I hear a bunch of people say it's not about the film itself, it's about who you watch it with. That doesn't really make for a good film. I have tried so hard to watch this movie and enjoy it, but I just can't. I get it, it's a certain style of humor, but I just don't find that style of humor funny. I find it annoying and dull. And I've watched this with every kind of audience. In fact, I watched this after a long night. We were all tired, 2 o'clock in the morning, a bunch of hyperactive, excitable, large group of friends. I still couldn't crack a smile. Nothing. It's just not for me. Simple as that. And I don't really know how to explain it, honestly. This will probably be the hardest one to explain on this list. I just kind of find it... boring. The characters are boring, the plot is boring, the jokes are really boring, and I know that's kind of the joke of the whole thing, but I just don't find that joke funny. Napoleon Dynamite. I really wish there was some actual dynamite in this movie. Number 7, E.T. the Extraterrestrial. And now I'm gonna duck, because I think a lot of you guys are gonna try to shoot me for this one. No? Nope. Okay, good, I'm in the clear. E.T. isn't like a bad film or anything, it's just kind of generic. 
The story isn't really anything special. Of course, we all know the story about the happy little alien who comes down to Earth, has a little bit of wacky miscommunications, and then ultimately tries to return home. Yeah, that's E.T. It's just, it kind of goes through the typical kind of storyline. The characters are alright, the scenarios are alright, it's just kind of alright. I don't really see it as this big cinematic marvel, but I guess it was really trying to be. I mean, everyone really loved it at the time. Just kind of now it seems a little plain and generic. And a lot of people did try to rip this thing off, but to be fair, this story wasn't really that original to begin with. It's kind of one of those cases where everybody kind of does the same thing, but then one person who does that same thing gets hailed for it for no particular reason. That's kind of the way I see E.T. Sure, a lot of people kind of fell in love with this movie and really resonated with it, but I don't know, maybe I'm just kind of being a cynic. To be fair, it has been a little while since I've seen this, so maybe if I check it out again sometime soon, that whole thing may have changed. Hmm. Now we'll just have to see, won't we? Number 6, Independence Day. Despite the fact that this film was absolutely panned when it came out, everyone seems to love it. I don't. Everyone says it's like a popcorn movie, you're not really supposed to think about it, you're just supposed to watch things blow up. Cool. I could go do that. Just let me go on down to the local fireworks station, buy some fireworks, and then watch stuff blow up for about a half hour. There, I save a lot of my time and I get the same amount of experience as I would watching Independence Day, with a lot less of the improbability and hokey dialogue. Now I can see a lot of people having a lot of fun with this film, but I just kind of find it, well, stupid. It's kind of like Shooter starring Mark Wahlberg, where everything just kind of happens to make the plot seem cool, and with it, and somewhat suspenseful, but not too suspenseful so that they turn off the market. But still, that's not my problem. The whole popcorn movie thing isn't the problem. What is the problem is those few, but somewhat vocal, people out there that actually say that this is a good, compelling movie. Please. The President of the United States getting in a fighter jet to fight off aliens. Does that sound like anything else except for a sci-fi direct-to-video movie? Come on. Maybe it's just me being hypercritical, but you know what? It's my opinion, my list, so nah, nah. Number 5. Ace Ventura Pet Detective. Blasphemy, right? I'm a Jim Carrey fan. I love The Mask. I love Bruce Almighty. I really love The Truman Show. Dumb and Dumber is good, of course. And his old stand-ups that he used to do, and his bits on variety shows, they're all great. So why do I dislike this Jim Carrey masterpiece? Because it's not really a masterpiece. It's just annoying. So Jim Carrey, as we all know, his main shtick is that he's really good at making weird over-exaggerations and funny voices and flailing his body around like a rubber noodle. That's what he does best. However, just because he does it best doesn't mean he should do it throughout the entire movie. He's not really acting so much like Jim Carrey here, he's more acting like Polly Shore. Even his crazier performances like in Dumb and Dumber or The Mask still are dialed down. They aren't constant insanity over and over and over again. Practically all of Carrie's lines are screaming or mugging or doing some sort of weird annoying tilt to it. None of this is played straight, I know it's a comedy, but hey, so is Dumb and Dumber. Even then, that still had its quiet moments to let you just breathe. And that's a movie where a guy gets killed by intestinal gas. This thing has no excuse. This is a definitive case of them seeing something really popular and then trying to exploit it to no end. And I think that the sequel, Ace Ventura When Nature Calls, is the reason why he's not so eager on doing sequels. That one was even worse. Although, it's not on this list because a lot of people seem to agree with me. But Ace Ventura Pet Detective. This is the reason the mute button was invented. Number 4. Disney's Live Action Remakes. I know I'm not the first one to say this, but these have no reason to exist. Zero. Absolute. Nothing. Zilch. Nada. At least a lot of people seem to be kind of getting on my same turn of pace now that the Aladdin trailer has come out. But it still seems like a lot of people are falling into these traps. So let me explain why I can't stand them. First of all, there's the obvious reason. They don't have any reason to exist. They're basically unchanged from the Disney animated films. The Jungle Book, Cinderella, Aladdin, I'm sure when that comes out, they're basically gonna be no different, come on. What's even the point? 
aside from all of that sweet, sweet money. Mm. This is exactly going right along with my theory that Disney only really seems to care about money and not much else. After all, these Disney live-action remakes always make a lot of money, so why put actual effort telling a new interesting story when you could just remake the same story but make it more expensive and add contemporary stars? Who needs imagination when you got cash? But there's other problems with these two. Whatever changes they do make end up kind of taken away from the whole thing. Like taking the songs out of the films. For reasons. That's one. They also had on a bunch of unneeded and unutilized really plot devices. Like the whole Belle's mother thing in Beauty and the Beast. I could go on and on and people have. But the bottom line is these things basically go against Walt Disney's original vision. He didn't make movies to make money. He made money to make movies. The only reason he really cared about a profit was because he had more stories to tell. He wanted to do these big grandiose things. These are basically just blank checks that they're mass producing. They don't care. There's no real time and effort put into it. Sure, it looks pretty sometimes, but that's how it gets you. They try to lure you in with pretty looking scenery and that ugly blue abomination that's supposed to be the genie. Just a smear on Disney's record and another reason why I just can't stand watching them these days. Number three, this one's gonna get really heated in the comments, I'm sure, but the Marvel Cinematic Universe. I'm sorry, I just don't like these. I know Deadpool doesn't count, but I do like those, and I did like Spider-Man Homecoming and the first Iron Man. I like those. However, then we get to the rest. See, Iron Man was the first of these, right? So, everyone liked it. They liked the special effects. They were cool. They liked the fight scenes and the plot development. And they liked Tony Stark's snarky character. So, now that Iron Man is a success, let's make all of the superheroes Iron Man. And I don't actually mean, like, physically make them Iron Man. I mean mentally. My issue with these things is that they're all the same. I don't know about Avengers, I heard that's very different, but you know what, I just don't care enough to see it. I mean, just think about it though. Captain America, Iron Man, Thor, they all gotta act the same way, they gotta be quippy, they gotta be, I don't take this seriously, I'm cool. They make random pop culture references and all that kind of stuff. The love interests are always just the love interests, they're just kinda the grounded, down-to-earth, love interest, female support. The villains are either Loki, who are admittedly the same thing as Iron Man, just evil, or they're boring. They have nothing to them. Then you got the side characters who also add a lot more other quips with probably some kind of running joke going between them. You kind of get where I'm going, right? These things just kind of feel like the same thing over and over because they kind of keep going through the same characters over and over. Whether they be Iron Man or Iron Man who looks like Captain America or Iron Man who looks like Thor or Iron Man who looks like Ant-Man or Iron Man that looks like Spider-Man. Although Spider-Man is supposed to be a little quippy, but still. The only one I really felt like broke out of this mold was Spider-Man Homecoming. Not only did they dial back the quippiness to actually, you know, tell a story, but they actually made the villain sympathetic and actually had a lot of really good plot movements. The biggest thing for me, though, is just that they can't really seem to have a moment. Everything has to be a joke. Everything has to be a sarcastic quip. And everybody does the quips. It'd be one thing if it was just like one character per film, but it's everybody. They all do it and it gets tiring. Now I do see why people like these though, because if you turn your brain off, you know, they're fun. They're exciting. And especially that expanded universe, that's really admirable that they're able to do that and have it actually flow together very well. That's one thing I can absolutely commend them for, is the cinematic universe flows very nicely. But I just can't get behind it, I'm sorry. And no amount of whining in the comments is ever going to change that. Now, the MCU and all the films down, I can at least understand how some people can like it. These next two, not a chance. If you like them, that's totally fine, but please explain to me why. Number two, Patch Adams, starring Robin Williams. Robin Williams has made a couple bumps here and there. Jack, Flubber, Man of the Year, and then there's also Patch Adams. Hands down his absolute worst movie, there's no question. 
This thing is disgusting. The real life Patch Adams was a doctor who was all about using levity and excitement and laughter to cure people. He was a doctor who believed that laughter truly was the best medicine, and he was a lot better with bedside manner and helped kind of revolutionize a lot of things. This movie portrays him as some kind of sadistic clown man who doesn't take anything seriously, and it's just some kind of tortured soul of the, you don't understand me, dad, no one understands me, I'm going to my room, who steals from hospitals and actively harms his patients for fun. Not only that, but also this movie has some of the most stereotypical villains ever with the establishment going, blah, 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 I am the establishment, blah, 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 blah. you cannot beat me. Blah, 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 blah. And it also does a lot of really disgusting things in here too, like twisting around real facts, like his male best friend who got killed in a very tragic accident. I believe it was a car accident. But then he gets turned into this romantic lead who gets murdered by a patient, all for just a little bit of exploitation. Hunter Adams himself, the real-life Patch Adams, hates this movie. He was portrayed as just a clown and a menace to society. Meanwhile, his practices and actual beliefs, which are very influential and has really good strong effects to this day, were just made into jokes. This thing was very clearly not actually supposed to help Patch Adams or actually tell his story in any way. It was just meant to be a cheap cash grab on a semi-recognizable name with a very up-and-coming actor. Critics at the time absolutely hated it, but audiences these days seem to love it because it's so dramatic and thought-provoking. No, it's manipulative and disgusting. If this film was any sappier, it'd give you diabetes by watching it. But you know, this film is like a lot of candy, you know? Seems pretty sweet at first, but full of dangerous, terrible things that can damage you in the long run. Patch Adams has, like, nothing good in it. I honestly can't think of really any positives. Except that Williams, every so often, has some pretty good stage presence in here, but of course, he always does. Other than that, Patch Adams? Blech. Before we get to number one, let's have an honorable mention for Vice. I was gonna put this on here, but I realized people don't like this film. However, those who do like it seem to really like it. But there are some who like it, and some who don't. But I have very quickly found out who is who. Democrats love it, Republicans don't. For me, even though I have my political opinions, I'm always one to hear out the other side and listen to what they have to say. This is America, we're supposed to do that. This film is one of the most propaganda, brainwashy films I have ever seen. I don't like George W. Bush's second term. His first term, it was... It had some issues, but it was decent. Second term, no, had a lot of problems. Very little justifying it. And Dick Cheney didn't really help in that second term. However, this portrays him as some sort of malicious monster who will actively do whatever he could to make sure that America is under his control and even the world under his control. Yeah, no one was fooled at the time. Everyone knew that this was some kind of propaganda nightmare. Even CNN was talking about it. So you know it's gotta be bad. This film did win an Oscar for makeup. And it did look good, admittedly. Nothing else. No. But it seems like most people aren't fooled by this travesty. So, not all is lost. Now the number one film that everybody loves that I hate, Oliver Stone's JFK. Speaking of politics, I cannot stand this movie. Like I said, right up there with the Drawn Together movie and the Thief and the Cobbler of Miramax cut as one of my least favorite movies ever. First off, this isn't a movie. It's just a conspiracy theory. Sure, it's got some big name actors in it like Tommy Lee Jones, but no, 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 no. Let's get this straight. This isn't really... A movie, it's just a bunch of people talking about conspiracy theories and ultimately going with one of the sickest, most twisted ones ever. Basically, this film ends with the conclusion that Lyndon Johnson staged a coup and had President Kennedy assassinated so that he could take over. There's also a bunch of other unprovable things that they try to spout off as fact here. And while, well, yeah, there's a lot of, like, characters in here, quote-unquote, they're really just talking heads. It's just a discussion. Which a discussion would be kind of fine, but again, it's preaching sick, twisted things. Now, we don't know and probably will never know what happened in the Kennedy assassination. Too many details have been lost and that Lee Harvey Oswald was killed by Jack Ruby, so we'll never ever really be able to find out his motives. But one thing is pretty obvious, Johnson didn't stage a coup against Kennedy. I don't think he would have done that. 
I don't think any of them would have done that. I don't even think Buchanan would have done that. So like Patch Adams, this takes advantage of a lot of true life things. The reason why this is worse than Patch Adams though is it's exploiting a murder, not a guy's life. It's exploiting a murder and doing it just for fanfare. Sure, it does it in a quote unquote artistic way, but you know what? Sure, looks nice, whatever. But I don't care about looks, I care about the meat within, and this meat is rotten. I mean, yeah, Patch Adams exploited a death, I gotta say, but it wasn't the main focal point. But this film seems to be getting a bit more of a bad rap lately, especially amongst historians, which is good. Let's just hope it continues. Alright guys, I'll see you next time, I hope you enjoyed my list. What do you guys think of these films if you've seen them? Comment below, let me know, and I'll see you guys next week. Good night everybody.